Well, right after that situation happened, just this past weekend, we had the biggest sports tragedy of all time. Yeah. <clears throat> Not to say that there hasn't, haven't been thousands of other tragedies over the years. I mean, a whole rugby team died and so forth. Football but on, team died. Football team died. But on the caliber of this, I can't think of any other tragedy of someone on the level of a Kobe Bryant and his daughter, a superstar bigger than the sport itself. Yeah. Passing away in the most horrific way possible. Yeah. And uh, I was cleaning my mother's bedroom out, my last run through. And my boy Darren called me from uh, Texas and was like, John, uh, I got to tell you this bad news. And I said, oh, what? And he tells me, and I go, you got to be bullshit. He goes, nah, man. I had to tell you first, you know, it was like TMZ won't report something unless it's definite. Uh, and I guess it was like one second off the line when they confirmed it, so he called me. I just walked out the house, took some deep breaths, talked to him for a second and went back in and told my family. And then I just sat on the bed and started crying. And it was a trip too because like I said, I only cried at Heavy D, Nipsey's, you know, now my mom's and, and Kobe's passing. And the, the emotion, the things that go through your mind uh, was amazing. I'm always in business with my daughter, Tyler, uh, and Deuces 22. And uh, sometimes I have arguments with my daughter, Gigi. It just literally when I was like, his Gigi died, it just hit me entirely different. Uh, it was like, okay, I got this, I bought this purple thing just to show off, but now I gotta use it, because you ain't got no tissue. Uh, <laughs> but I thought. Take a moment. Yeah, that's cool. I thought, Who am I gonna call? And I uh, I text Brian Shaw, and uh, he was like, "This is crazy, Sal. I love you." And I hit Glenn Rice, and get a, you know, didn't get a hit back yet. But it's like I didn't say anything to Big, but in my brain, when Michael Jackson died in two thousand and nine. I was like, what happens now? Like, oh my God, I'm, I'm at the Staples Center looking at a gold casket, not feeling it. Like, I love Michael, but Kobe, I said to him, so you're gonna be the next Michael Jordan? He was like, nah, I'm gonna be the first Kobe Bryant. I, I literally got punched in the stomach by Oakley for telling Michael Jordan in his face I thought Kobe was better than him at 27. I get punched. Dave Chappelle said, I wish I had a show. This is, this is an episode. Chris Tucker and they all laughing at me. I'm out of breath. Uh, but I literally love this kid's game like, like I like Dr. J's game. And I, and I would tell people that. I was like, this kid is entirely different. I had him at 20. 20 years old and I'm seeing it. And uh, he always talked about doing everything. Like I said, why did you not go? I want to do it young. I want to play bands. Michael, I do everything young. I get married young. Uh, you know, I'm going to retire, you know what I'm saying? I'm young, he thought. Uh, so for 20 years, right? Vanessa had him for 19 or 20 years. Vanessa had him for 20 years. So it's, it's, a, it's a trip. It's, it's like Aaliyah. Certain people do things in the amount of time they have that we think is so short amount of time, but they do some amazing things in that short span. Well, nine people died on this flight. Yeah. I mean, Kobe, his 13-year-old daughter, which really kind of, that was the one that really shook me up. Because at first it was just Kobe. 
Yeah. And then you find out, and you know, and it was being reported that he survived by his four daughters and his wife, and then, oh damn, her, his 13-year-old was on the flight, along with a couple of her friends and a couple of, you know, like a coach and, you know, his wife and, you know, the pilot. Um, oddly enough, this was the same helicopter that he took to his retirement celebration at the Staples Center. Were you there? No. Yeah, well, it, it can hold 10. So having nine and four of them being small bodies. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was basically a situation, you know, I've been reading articles about it. There's no black box in this particular helicopter, so we're not gonna know exactly what happened, but based on the flight information and the communications, it just, you know, and this happened literally down the street from my house. Yeah. In Calabasas, like literally down the street. And from what I understand, the pilot should have turned back because the weather conditions were just too foggy. But you don't want to tell a VIP like Kobe Bryant that we have to go stop at this random airport and you have to call your car service to go drive you <laughs> to where you need to go. Instead they will of, now. Oh, yeah. They're, 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 you know, it's a trip. Guys started getting to the point, you know, regrettably after Aaliyah dies, you're not just going to rush and get on a plane, the cheapest one. It's, that's no longer the thought process. It shouldn't be. And for these companies and every so-called celeb or anybody who can afford this kind of transportation should realize their safety is first. Yeah, I mean, because the Aaliyah situation, I read into that somewhat recently, it was literally, she was trying to fly back, she was on some Caribbean island, mm -hmm. she wanted to fly back, the plane was overloaded, mm -hmm. it was a pilot that didn't, wasn't even supposed to fly, and she just got, you know, she pressured the pilot to take off, even though the plane was too heavy, it took off and literally just went slamming down into the, yeah. into the ground. Um, very similar situation in a, in a certain way. Right. What I meant by that is, like, of course you can, usually when you're in a position like that, you want anything you want. They were going to a basketball tournament, they had to be there, this is the best way of getting there. They're not going to get there if this doesn't happen. Okay, we can make this happen. We just have to, you know, that rah-rah, push-through mentality. Yeah. Um, this will change the mind of everybody. People where, like, I get in my car and put my... Uh, my seatbelt on now. When I was learning how to drive, you only did that for the instructor. Oh, I always wore my seatbelt. Right? Oh, yeah? No, uh, every no. time. No, you only did that for the instructor when you were getting your license. People didn't wear, what did we call it back in the day, safety belt? Safety belt? Plus, in my mom's car, it only went here. <laughs> right, the old school, yeah. <laughs> so The shoulder strap wasn't around yeah, yet. Yeah, there's no reason, you know. 